and welcome back to online language academy dot com um good to be back in this t uh, in this lesson today we're going to be looking at prepositions of place in english we're going to be looking at in on at by over and many many more so if you have problems with your prepositions in English, then this video is for you. We're going to be looking at, I think, 16, 13, 16 uh, prepositions in total, and you're going to learn the difference between in and inside, under, below, above and over, uh, beneath, underneath. All right, we're going to be looking at many, many different types of preposition in English. So, uh, it's a good one. Uh, stick around. Now, I was a little bit late um, today because I was trying to get this chat to appear here. I'm having a problem and it's not appearing. Um, so, never mind. If you're watching the replay, you won't see those comments there. Um, but if you're watching on YouTube, if you're watching live, then you can, of course, write in the chat box. I will still see them. And for our quiz at the end of the class, you can use the chat box to give me your answers. All right. Yes, it is an interactive lesson today. We are live and interactive, so um, stick around. That means stay until the end of the lesson. We're going to look at the content, and then I've got a lovely little quiz for you. Um, okay, so if you are new here, please do subscribe. All right, this is what we're doing. Subscribe and click the bell. Don't forget to click the bell. That will mean you get notified when I am next live or when I next publish a lesson. And if you want to say hi, thanks, if you uh, like the channel and like the lesson, just support this channel with a small thumbs up. That would mean a lot. Okay. Right. If you are watching live, let me know if you can hear me okay and if you can see me okay today. That would also be great. I had some connection problems last week, but I think I fixed it and I think this week will be better. Um, I do these live lessons every week now. I'm aiming for Thursday at 5.30 Madrid time. This is what I do. This is what I am. I'm the owner of Ola Online Language Academy. So if you want to learn English if you want to learn spoken English, uh, conversation, pronunciation, improve your fluency and gain confidence speaking English, then that's what we do. We do this with professional one-to-one -one classes via Skype with native teachers. So that's where I'm from. That's who I am. If that's something that interests you, then your first class is free and the link is in the description. Okay, let's begin with today's class, which is prepositions of place. All right, hello Ronan, hello Eliel, great to have you live with us today. If anybody else is watching, which I'm sure you are, uh, come and say hello in the chat box. Right then, first of all, let's have a look at these two, in and inside. What's the difference between in and inside? Well, basically, I think of it like this. Uh, in is something, you know, you can put a pen in a box, for example. I have, I have many pens in this boot. In fact, I use this boot as a place to keep my pens. The pens are inside, sorry, made a mistake already. The pens are in in the boot okay the pens are in the boot because they are surrounded completely by the boot all right they're surrounded if you will by four walls okay and it doesn't have to be you know the wall of a room but it just has to be a, a figurative wall 
okay? This boot provides four walls for these pens. So we can say that the pens are in the boot. Similarly, you can say that Paris is in France, all right? You just have to really be flexible with this idea of walls, all right? France, does France have a, a wall? Does it have a border? Is there a moment where France stops being France? Yes, there is. France has a very defined border. So Paris is in that border. It's in France. Okay. Um, right, what else? Let's give you another example of that. Um, the Yeah, you if you have a box, for example, um, you can put a ball, for example, in the box. The box has four walls. You put your ball inside, uh, in, in the box. All right, you put your ball in the box. The flowers, I have some beautiful flowers in my garden. All right, my garden, again, like France, but a bit smaller, but my garden has a very defined area where my garden is, the flowers are in my garden. Now, inside is very, very similar to in, but instead of, yes, let's, let's use the example of the ball, all right? We, so we, we, we picked up the ball and we put it in the box. If I then put the lid on the box, the box is completely closed. It's closed and the ball is completely covered in every aspect by the box. I can't see the ball, all right? I cannot see the ball because it is completely enclosed by the box. And in this situation, we use inside. The ball is inside the box. I can't see the ball because it's inside the box. If you want to listen to a CD, you put your CD inside the CD player. All right, you can't see the CD because it is completely, in every aspect, in every direction, covered by the CD player. Um, another example is, yeah, my bag is currently inside my car. Again, my car is not a convertible. It's completely covered. So my bag is inside my car. And I am currently inside my office. I'm inside my office. I'm inside. I'm not outside. Outside is in the street, in the garden, um, in front of my house. I'm not outside. I'm inside. All right. Um, good. Next one, then, is on and on top of. Again, two very similar expressions. Um, when do we use each? Well, on is basically when one object is on is touching the surface of another for example i have a nice book here chicago cubs book and a beautiful phone um my phone is on the book all right it is touching the surface of the book therefore it is on the book all right now my book is on the table and my phone is on the table. Uh, on top of, however, it's very, very similar, but it really, really, really accentuates, yeah, we're emphasizing that it is on the very, very top part of something. And here's a good example for you. My fridge in my kitchen, all right? I have many, many magnets on my fridge. Okay, you know, the magnets that stick on your fridge. I have many, many magnets on my fridge. But I have a plant on top of the fridge. Okay, I have a plant on top of the fridge. I'm accentuating, I'm emphasizing the fact that I'm talking about the top, top part of the fridge. Okay. 
Right then, let's have a look. Above and over. Two, again, very similar prepositions. So when do we use each? Well, let me tell you. Um, above is when the objects are not touching. Okay? So I said, for example, that my phone was on the book. Right? Because they're touching. But if they're not touching, now I can say that my phone is over the book. Uh, that shelf, that shelf, that white shelf, that is over the bus. All right? It's at a higher level, but it's not touching. The shelf is over the bus. Or the plant is over the bus. So, not touching. That's the difference between over and on. Uh, your nose is over your mouth. All right? Above, sorry, above. God, it's confusing for me sometimes, uh, and I'm, it's my native language. My, my nose is above my, uh, my, my nose is above my mouth. Right, so I, you can say over and above in that respect. Uh, usually, I, I think I've actually made a little mistake here. Above is when it's not touching, all right? As I said, I, English is crazy, even for native speakers. Above is when it's not touching, all right? Above. My phone is above the book. My phone is above the book. My nose is above my mouth, all right? And the plant is above the bus. Above. Over is very, very similar. And in fact, when I was giving you those examples, it didn't sound wrong to say over. The difference with over is that we usually use over together with a verb. All right? Together with a verb. For example, fly or go or hit. All right? Hit over. In tennis, you hit the ball over a net. If you want to go to America from Europe, you have to fly over the Atlantic Ocean. And yesterday I saw a beautiful rainbow, rainbow going over the city in front of my window. All right, so that's the difference between, um, that is the difference between over and above. Next one, then, is under and underneath. Now, not a big difference, to be honest with you, but under, you should know, is when one object is covered by another object. It's covered. So, the perfect example, my legs are under the table. My legs are under the table. All right? Um, if... There is a coin, one euro coin, for example, on the floor, and I put my foot on it, the coin is under my foot. All right, it's completely covered by my foot. So, the coin is under my foot. And I lost my watch under the bed. I lost my watch. I actually lost my watch for about three years and found it. It was under the bed. It was completely covered by the bed. All right, so that's under. Um, and we're going to look at below too. But for the moment, let's just look at under and underneath. Underneath really is a more formal way of saying under. So I can say, yeah, my legs are underneath the table. That's fine. It sounds more formal, but it's completely fine. There is a coin underneath my foot. It's fine. Bit formal, but it's fine. And I lost my watch underneath the bed. Perfect. Uh, okay. All right, just to remind you, um, we are looking at 
prepositions of place today. There is going to be an interactive quiz at the end of the class. There we are, prepositions of place. We've looked at a few. We're going to look at more. If you like this lesson, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube. That would mean a lot to me. And come and say hello while you wait for the quiz. You have the chat box on Skype. Uh, sorry, on uh, on YouTube. Come and say hello. I love it when I know where people are watching from. Okay. Next one then is below and beneath. So we've looked at under and underneath, and now we're looking at below and beneath. First, what's the difference between under and below? All right, well, let's think of it this way. Below is the opposite of above. Remember, the phone was above the book because it wasn't touching. The opposite is this. All right, again, it's not touching, but it's at a lower height. Okay, below. So, with using the examples of before, we can say that the bus, where's the bus? Uh, yeah, the bus is below the shelf. All right. And the telephone box, well, the telephone box is also below the shelf. Your mouth is below your nose. And beneath, again, Guess what? It's just a, no, a more formal way of saying below. So we can say the bus is beneath the shelf. That's fine. It's just more formal. My mouth is beneath my nose. That's fine. It's just a bit of a more formal way to say that. Okay. Next we have... Next. Next to. By and beside. By. Next to and beside. <clears throat> These are really, really similar to each other. There's no real important difference. They all mean um, that the distance between two things is very small. Okay? So, I am sitting by... Well, my, my, I'm sitting by the computer. My phone is by my book. It's not on the book. All right, it's not on the book, it's not above the book, it's not below the book, it's by the book, okay? By the book, could be touching just a small distance away, it's by the book. The park where I take my daughter is next to the supermarket, it's by the supermarket, okay? My phone is next to the book, my phone is by the book. They mean the same thing, you can use them interchangeably. And um, they are just fairly simple. Really, nothing more to say. Beside is just a, again, it's a more formal way of saying bye. All right, beside. So, my, my phone is beside my book. The park is beside the supermarket. And I wouldn't generally say that because it's a bit more formal. If I'm speaking... I'm usually speaking informal English, so I would say by or next to. Okay, um, <clears throat> right. Ronan says he wishes I had a million subscribers. Ronan, me too. I just need 999,000 more. No, more almost. I have 10,000, so I'm getting there. <laughs> Slowly but surely. Okay, at, at is the next one. And many people confuse when to use at and when to use in. Remember, in is when something is very enclosed, all right? And it can be enclosed, meaning enclosed by the borders of a country, the borders of a town, okay? Uh, there is a cathedral in... Canterbury, for example. There is a cathedral in Canterbury. All right? It's in the town of Canterbury. At. So when do we use at? Here's the thing. We use at when we're talking about a specific place. 
All right, we're going to look at examples. Examples help more than grammatical descriptions. Always. That's why I always give you plenty of examples in my lessons. Um, but the rule for at is that we use it for a specific place. For example, I used to live in Canterbury and I lived at number five Beverly Road. All right? Number five Beverly. I lived at five Beverly Road. So that's the, that's the address of the house where I lived many, many years ago. I lived at. It's a specific place. All right? And we're talking about that specific place. That is where I lived. That specific place. That specific house. Imagine when I was at university. A friend calls me. Greg, are you, uh, are you at home? Yeah, I'm in, I'm in my house. I'm at home. I'm in the house. I'm inside. Okay, that means that I am enclosed by the house. I'm telling the person that I'm, I'm not at the supermarket. I'm in my house. But when I'm saying where I lived, I lived at a specific place. I lived at number five, Beverly Road. Um, it's nice and quiet in the office today because my daughter is at the swimming pool. All right, my daughter is at the swimming pool. Again, I could say she is in the swimming pool if I want to say that she is specifically swimming and in the water, but I'm talking about this specific place. I'm talking about the the establishment, the building. Where is she? She is at the swimming pool. All right, I will meet you, I will meet you at the train station. Where shall we meet? Let's meet at the train station. It's a specific place. It's a building. Specific place in town. Let's meet at the train station. All right. And knock, knock, knock. Somebody's at the door. Somebody is at the door. Yeah. Ding dong. Who's there? Somebody's at the door. All right. Where are they? They're in that specific place just outside my house. They're at the door. Okay, we have one more to do before we hit the quiz. Um, and that is in front of and behind. All right, fairly simple. Um, in front of, let's use the example of, uh, what shall I use? This flag. Let's use this flag. Whoa. Um, and I was I was gonna say this this glass of water, but now the the water is on the table. Yep, the water is on the table. Um, it's touching the surface of the table. So let's use my book again. All right, Chicago Cubs. And if you know what flag this is, write it in the comments below. I'll tell you later. Um, but if you know what flag this is, write it in the comments. Write it in the uh, in the chat, and I will tell you later. Um, okay, so for this exercise, uh, in front of, all right, the flag is in front of the book, all right? In other words, it's between you and the book, all right? And now, the flag is behind the book, okay? Yeah, you can see it, but it's behind the book. In other words, it is further from you than the book, okay? The flag is in front of the book. The flag is behind the book. But what flag is that? Let me know. Have a guess. Um, okay, great. It's quiz time. Um, hello, Anderni Amaral from Brazil, who is in front of his computer. Fantastic. Um, all right, let's go. Let's go with the quiz. How many people um, do we have watching? I'm not sure, but those of you who are watching, please participate in the quiz. Uh, otherwise, it's just me saying a load of questions to myself, which is no fun for anybody. All right, let's go, quiz time. Sometimes, just so you know, sometimes more than one answer is possible. Um, so don't be afraid to write your answers because there's a good chance that you will be right. 
Number one, my friend lives in Perth. All right, Perth. A nice place. Um, far, far away from England. So let me know. It's, it's actually true. My friend does live uh, down, down under. Perth is a beautiful place in Australia. In fact, um, where if you dig a hole from, I think when I lived in uh, when I lived in Chicago, if you dig a hole, dig 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 hole right through the center of the earth, you would come out uh, on the other side of the world. Here, Perth. So he was my best friend. He lives in. Perth. Um, yeah, I've just told you the answer there. Marina de Argentina and Mag got the answers right there. In, indeed. My friend lives in Perth. Okay, very good. Um, excuse me while I try to find some paper. No, I can't find paper. Okay, I'm going to be sitting in a little puddle of water to finish this class. Never mind. Um, okay. Well done, Marina. Well done, Mag. Thanks for participating. Well done, Andani. The correct answer is, of course, my friend lives in Perth. All right. Number two. Where is Perth? Um, where is Perth? Perth is Western Australia. Yes, as I said. Perth is Western Australia. Australia, a place I would really love to visit. Let me know your answer. Perth is at, in, on, under, over, what? What's the preposition? Perth is Western Australia. Yes, it's a place I would really, really like to visit, especially having my um, friend there. But Unfortunately, uh, it's a little bit expensive to get to, especially when you have to now pay for a little baby who is not even a little baby anymore. Um, okay, so Andane, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing his name correctly, but Mr. Amaral or Mrs. Amaral is saying behind. Perth is behind Western Australia is incorrect. No. Incorrect. Uh, Marina de Argentina says in. Perth is in Western Australia. Uh, Marina, you don't sound 100% sure. Uh, Mag Martin or Mag Martin says Perth is in Western Australia. You're correct. All right, Marina and Mag, well done. Perth is in fact in Western Australia. Okay. Western Australia, again, it's a territory. All right. It's a territory, has its, has its borders. So, uh, Perth is one place in the area of Western Australia. Um, all right, number three, I met her a party. I met her a party. All right. Remember, meet, the past of meet is met. And you meet someone when you see somebody for the first time. All right, it's just that first interaction with someone, you meet someone. Once you've met them, then you know them. Okay, that's the difference between meet and know. So, I met in the past, I met her mm, a party. Um, so, Mag says at, I met her at a party. Um, Pratap Maji says hello from um, from India. Hello. Um, feel free to answer the questions in this. We have to choose the correct preposition. If you come late to the lesson, you have to choose the correct preposition. So, I met her in a party, at a party, on a party. The correct answer, Marina says in, Mag says at. Their 100% record, one is going to go, I'm afraid. Um, the correct answer is at. All right, at a party. All right, the party, it's not a specific place, is it? It's more of a concept um, than, a, than a physical place. 
Um, but it is a physical party, um, a physical, you know, uh, sorry, uh, a specific concept. It's a specific place. Even though you can't touch it, it's a specific place, uh, the party. And yeah, the preposition usually always with party is at. All right, I am at a party. I met her at a party. All right, the next one, um, put the milk, the fridge, please. Put the milk in the fridge, please. Oh, if we're being polite, I did my, um, was it last week or two weeks ago, I did a lesson on how to be polite in English. If I want to be polite, I could say, can you, can you, can you put the milk in the fridge, please? Or could you, could you put the milk in the fridge, please? Yeah, we have some correct answers here. Uh, in, 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 and in, everybody. Joe, Justin, thank you for commenting. You got it right. Can you put the milk in the fridge, please? All right. Good stuff. Next one. The flowers, your house, are lovely. The flowers, your house, are lovely. Lovely. All right. So what's the preposition here? I, my dad gave me some, uh, <laughs> my dad gave me some flowers, actually, which I put in my garden um, a month ago. They were also lovely flowers, but now they're dead. I'm very bad at taking care of flowers, and uh, I'm very sad. They are completely dead. But what is the preposition here? And uh, The flowers, your house, are lovely. Mag and Marina both say in. And the correct answer is, the correct answer is, the flowers in your house are lovely. Absolutely, flowers are in the house, all right? The house has four walls and a roof, all right? So everything is in your house, all right? The kitchen is in your house. The flowers are in your house. I am in my house, all right? In, in, in. In fact, let's just um, just a quick little thing that gets to my mind uh, here. The milk is in the fridge. The fridge is in the kitchen. The kitchen is in the house. The house is in the city. The city is in the country. The country is in Europe, and Europe is in the world. In, 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 in. Okay, you can see how things are enclosed and enclosed by bigger areas while well, we use in for each of these situations um okay right then yes uh, the next one my wife is still work all right my wife is still work what do we say here excuse me while i dry my arm um yeah my wife is still work so it doesn't really matter in this situation if your job or when you are work, if you're in an office or outside in a field, the concept of being work. All right, what is it? All right, we have uh, at from Marina. Joe Justin says in, uh, my wife is still in work. Um, yeah, it's a common mistake, very, very common mistake. But the answer is, Marina, you got it right. My wife is still at work. Okay, at work. Three things you need to know. You are always at work, at home, at school. All right, three things that you are always at. I'm at home. I'm at work, I'm at school, I'm at university, all right? At, 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 always with those words. At work, at home, and at school. Okay, uh, right, the next one. I left my phone, the shelf, all right? The shelf is this thing, this white thing here is a shelf. Where's my phone? Uh, I left it. The shelf. What have I got on my shelf there? I've got a plant on my shelf. I've got a little car with a Union Jack flag on it. 
and there I have a picture of my family. Um, yep, Kevin. Hi, Kevin. Uh, good to have you here again, as always. So yes, Mag, Kevin, um, and Marina, you're all right. It's I left my phone on the shelf. Well done, Joe, Justin. You all got it right. Easy. I left my phone on the shelf. And an eight, well done, also. All right, number eight. Um, why are you hiding the table? Why are you hiding the table? All right. Uh, okay. I, this, it might seem a stupid sentence for you, but honestly, I, I, I use this sentence many, many times. Um, almost every day with my little daughter. I'm like, hey, um... Why are you hiding? Where are you? Ah, you're hiding the table. Okay, Kevin appreciates my words. Well, Kevin, I appreciate you being here um, so regularly. It's good to have people who regularly attend these classes of mine and comment on the uh, on the YouTube channel. Much appreciated. Um, Mag under, Marina under, underneath. Uh, Kevin under the table, absolutely. Bang on, correct. Bang on, that means completely correct. You are bang on, you are correct. Why are you hiding under the table? Where are you? There you are, you're hiding under the table. Why are you hiding under the table? Um, okay. Let's put this picture, the wall. Let's put this picture, the wall. And Danae, you got it right as well, under the table, yep. All right, number nine, let's put this picture the wall. All right, beautiful picture, where should we put it? Uh, let's put it, let's put it, boom, the wall. Justin thinks, eh, on. Um, Kevin also, on the wall. Marina, on. Yes, Mag, you're correct. Let's put this picture on the wall. All right, let's put the picture on the wall. Number 10. Let's put this picture, the sofa. Sofa. You know there are three words for sofa in English? Sofa, settee. Like that, settee. And couch. Three words. Um, usually with my family, I use this one, settee. Uh, usually with my students, I use this one, sofa, because it's a transparent word. It's the same word in English and Spanish. Uh, and it's a really common word too, so I tend to say sofa. Um, so yeah, the answer for this one. Uh, let's put this picture, the sofa. Marina, Kevin, over the sofa. Marina, over the sofa. Uh, and then he says on, and Mag says on. Right then, so let's have a look. You've got your sofa, and you've got a picture. Where do you want to put your picture? If you put it on the sofa, like touching the sofa, then when you sit on the sofa, you're going to sit on the picture. This is no good. We don't want that to happen. You want to put it not touching the sofa, right? We want to put it on the wall, not touching, but at a higher level than the sofa, so we want to put it over the sofa. All right, over at a higher level, but not touching. If we put it on the sofa, it is definitely touching. And that's not a good idea if you value your picture. <laughs> All right. Um, Andani asks me how many languages I speak. I speak uh, English, obviously, I speak Spanish fluently. I, I've lived in Spain for about nine, ten years now. Um, I also speak French. I studied French at uni and lived in France for a year. And I also studied a little bit of Italian, two years of Italian at university. And I actually have tried to study a little bit of Portuguese and Greek and Swahili in my time, but didn't really do much with those. But I like learning languages, it's fun for me. Um, 
So there you go. Right then. Two more. I've got two more questions for you. I was going to do ten, but I thought, let's do two bonus ones here. Uh, and here we go. She lost her earrings at the swimming pool. All right. I told you earlier that my, uh, my daughter is currently at the swimming pool. But she lost her earrings. Her earrings. Not my daughter. My daughter doesn't have her ears pierced. But a hypothetical she lost her earrings the swimming pool. What could the answer be? This is a, a semi-true story. I got inspired, inspired for this question by my daughter, uh, by my, my wife who lost a pair of beautiful earrings the other day, which is a bit sad. Um, but anyway, all right, there we go. I got some answers coming through. Sorry, I was not seeing the, the most recent answers. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. All right then, um, yeah, June. Hi June, thanks for thanks for commenting. Good to have you here. Um, watching from Seoul, fantastic. All right. Um, okay. Great. So what have we got? At uh, Marina says at she left them at the swimming pool. And uh, Anthony says in. Mag says in the swimming pool. June says in the swimming pool. And Marina, Marina says inside the swimming pool. Right, there is more than one answer. Um, here, we could say at the swimming pool. We could say at the swimming pool. That's not what I actually meant with this, but really, you can say at the swimming pool. This means that maybe she lost them in the water. Maybe she lost them in the changing rooms. Maybe she lost them in reception or in the car park. All right, but what I actually meant here was the water. That was what I was thinking. She lost them, yeah, in the water. So in, in this case, uh, you would say she lost them in the swimming pool. If I say to you, or if I say to someone, uh, she lost her earrings in the swimming pool, it's obvious that I'm talking about the water. If I say she lost her earrings at the swimming pool, it means that it could be in the water, it could be in the changing room, you know, we're talking about the place, but not necessarily the water. All right, two options are correct there. All right, not inside, uh, not inside because the, um, yeah, the, the swimming pool itself only really has the board as it doesn't have the cover on top. You're not really inside the swimming pool, you are in the swimming pool. All right, hello, Catherine Ortiz. Good to have you here too. And again, thanks for commenting uh, and thanks for ta participating in this interactive quiz. All right, last one, folks. Uh, last question for you. She found her earrings. She found them. Happy ending to this interactive quiz. She found her earrings. They were her bag. Great. All right. Always nice to end on a positive note. So she found her earrings. They were her bag. Where were they? Where were they? They were. June says in her bag. Marina also. Oh, no, sorry. Marina says inside um, her bag. So we have two options there in or inside. Um, I will wait for a few more answers. Um, it's, a, it's a pity that this chat isn't working today. I tried to, I don't know why, I tried to get it working all throughout the day today and just couldn't. But anyway, if you're watching on YouTube, you can see the comments come um, as they were sent. If you're watching on the blog, then uh, it's a pity that we don't have those answers coming, but never mind. Never mind. Right then, uh, the answers are coming through. June says in, inside. Kevin says inside her bag. And Andone says in. So, you're all right. Yeah, you could say she found her earrings that were in her bag. That's fine. 
Um, you can also say they were inside her bag. That's also fine. It's not really clear in this sentence whether the bag was closed or whether the bag was open. Whether it was a bag that is always open or whether it was maybe a, a suitcase which is always completely closed. So they're both fine. She found her earrings. They were in her bag or they were inside her bag. Beautiful. All right then, folks. Um, yeah. Thanks for uh, thanks for being here. It's been uh, it's been a fun lesson today. Uh, just to remind everybody who's here, everybody who's watching live or watching the replay, that I am going to be back next week with another class for you. Um, I'm doing this from Online Language Academy. That's my own business. It's my um, online school. We teach conversation English uh, for foreign speakers with native English teachers. So if you are interested in increasing your fluency, uh, increasing your confidence speaking English, then I recommend you go to our website and book a first class for free. Try it out. Okay, thanks very much. I'll just read a few comments before I go. Um, Catherine asks me about the uh, the articles in English. Um, and actually, I, um, I replied actually to a comment that you wrote to me a short while ago. I can't remember. But, but basically, a, an, and the. I've actually, I've covered those in two separate videos. And I'll... Uh, I'll put the links in the description, but I will maybe do a different video on that because it's a it's quite a specific topic. Um, Joe says I would like to know how you pronounce two words, um, which I will write here for you, um, so everybody can see it. All right, the two words he wants me to pronounce are these. Now, yeah, these words for me and my pronunciation. These these words can. Um, can be pronounced in different ways depending on your accent in English. Uh, this one, I say laugh. Laugh. All right, I'm from the north of England. So, because I'm, the, uh, I'm from the north of England, I say laugh. People in the south of England give it a long A and say laugh, laugh, laugh. But I um, really think it's, yeah, I'm, bi I'm biased. I think it's easier, really, if you uh, use my version, which is laugh. And that's really, um, the, yeah, the whole of the north of England say laugh. Second word is, again, because I'm from the north of England, I have a quite strong vowel sound here. Love, love. All right, laugh and love. Laugh, love. There's many, uh, many things these days which say live, laugh, love. You might see signs in shops that say live, laugh, love. Yeah, live, laugh, love. That's how I pronounce it. Um, but yeah, it, they're words that really, really vary depending on your accent. Uh, yeah, Catherine. Yeah, I'm. I'll try to find the. Um, I'll try to find the comments for you. But I replied to a comment that you wrote on a different video with the links to those videos. Uh, okay, Kevin, when to use contractions and when not to use them? Well, basically, contractions are something that makes um, English easier to uh, to to speak. You know, so if we, instead of saying she is away, three words, we make contractions. She's away. Yeah, that's a contraction. Uh, when do we use them? Well, in spoken English, we always use them. Always, uh, when you're writing uh, an informal letter, it's fine to use them. When you're writing an email to a friend, when you're writing a text message, WhatsApp, you know, use contractions always. Avoid using contractions when you want to write formal English. General rule, you write formal English, avoid using contractions. All right, that's the only time when really contractions are a no-no, okay? Formal email, formal essay, um, don't use contractions. Uh, all right then, Kevin also says, can I use contractions in formal speaking? 
yeah, definitely, definitely. It's no problem. If you're in a job interview, if you've got an important client to impress, you want to really, um, you what you want to really focus on the language that you use, of course, yeah, and you want to avoid using informal vocabulary. Um, um, but contractions are fine, absolutely fine. It's just natural, really, really natural. All right, June says, in Korea, we learn American English at school, but she loves British English more. Thank you. <laughs> it's funny, you know, uh, when I was a kid, I used to love American English more. Um, and I lived in America for three years, and it's, it's unbelievable how much Americans love British English. It's uh, many times I was in shops, and people would say to me, oh, wow, just, just talk to me. So I think the people who love the British accent more than anybody is the Americans. <laughs> but it's nice. It's nice. Um, right then, I think I'm going to finish there. Um, if we have any more questions, I'll answer them. Kevin says, make a video of articles. Uh -huh. Yep, articles. Yeah, sure. Sure thing. Will do. Um, and I will probably make another video about prepositions because this video has been about prepositions of place. There's also prepositions of time and oh, it's such a big topic that there's, there's more to come on prepositions. Okay, thanks everyone for being here. It's been a really fun lesson. It's gone on much, much longer than I thought it would. Uh, I like to keep these lessons to 20 minutes, but it's been 50 minutes today. Um, it's been fun though. I've had a great time and I hope you have too. So thanks for being here and I'll see you next week. Bye for now.